The Edge Pixels tool detects and counts the number of pixels where an edge or change in contrast occurs. It then compares the amount of edge pixels seen in the live image to the amount seen in the master image and judges the target as okay or no good based off the limit adjustment threshold. The Edge Pixels tool differs from the outline tool in that the target shape is not considered, only the amount of edge pixels. Let's go through an example. I'm going to use this Edge Pixels simulator file to walk through step-by-step -step how to set up and use the Edge Pixels tool. The application I will go through is detecting whether or not there is a clear plastic film on top of these three black circles. In the image shown here, the clear film is present and thus creates some of this pixelation that you see on top of the circles. I'm going to use the Edge Pixels tool to detect whether this clear film is present or absent. Let's jump into sensor settings. Because I already have a master image saved, I'm going to jump to step three, my tool settings, and add a tool. Under the extra two tab is where you can find the Edge Pixels tool. You'll notice it gives me this yellow box on my image, which is my tool window, and it will highlight each edge pixel that it sees green to visually show me how many edge pixels there are. You can change your window shape to be a circle, or you can change it to be the entire field of view. For my example, I'm going to use a circle and I'm going to just be looking at my middle circle out of these three. If I zoom in, you can see all of the pixels that are highlighted. And one thing that I'm going to do is make my window a little bit smaller so that the edge of my circle is not included. The reason I'm going to do that is if I were to include this entire target, these edge pixels around the outer circle of my part are going to be present whether the film is there or not. And so that is a large number of pixels that will be in both my good and my bad part. So instead, I'm going to narrow my window down to exclude the very edges and instead just look at these air bubbles that are caused by the film being present. You can also add a mask, which I will do, and I'm making this a circle to do the same thing for this inner circle, because again, this inner circle will be present on both my good and my bad part, whether the film is present or not. So I'm going to ignore those pixels and just look at these highlighted here. The next thing is the sensitivity adjustment. So right now I'm on mid sensitivity. However, when I select high sensitivity, you can see it picks up many more edge pixels. Because my mid sensitivity does not pick up on that many, for example, these air bubbles over here, it's not picking up on as well. So I'm going to use this high sensitivity setting. The last thing is to set the limit adjustment. By default, this will be 50%, meaning that if I have a matching rate of 50% or greater, this would be considered a good part. And if I have less than 50%, that would be considered a bad part. You can also enable an upper limit if having too many edge pixels is considered bad as well. For me, I'm going to set mine at about 75%, just because I want mine to be a little bit more sensitive. But at this point, the basic settings of the edge pixels tool have been set up. I'm going to hop into the extended functions to quick go over this fixed reference area. So you can either enable or disable this function. And this is going to be used if in your master image, you do not have edge pixels to be picking up on. So for example, if I used the other side as my master image where there were no air bubbles or glare, there would be zero edge pixels and I wouldn't be able to set up my tool. However, I could enable this setting and then teach it based off of a live image or a different target than my master image and it would still be able to differentiate those edge pixels being present versus absent. But in my case, because my master image has the edge pixels present, I'm going to disable this and select OK. Lastly, I'm just going to quickly add a position adjustment so that when we run the simulator, my tool is able to track with the part just because there's slight movement. So I'm just going to set it around these three circles as 
all three circles will always be present for both good and bad part. So I'll hit OK and complete my program. If you have questions on the position adjustment, be sure to check out that video. But now let's test out how the Edge Pixels tool will operate on different targets. So I'm going to go into Operation Simulation. And as I click on each image that is saved, it will apply the tools we just set up to this program. So here, if I look at my Edge Pixels tool, you can see it's picking up on those air bubbles. It's slightly different from part to part. And here is a no good example. If I zoom in, there are some edge pixels, but not as many as when the clear film is present. So this is a no good part. You can see here, I'm actually getting a good result, but my threshold is at 79%. And this is a side where the film is not present. So you can see in this case, I will need to raise my threshold maybe to about 85% so that this would still be considered a no good part. And then back to the film being present is at a solid 100. So to clarify, the, the Edge Pixels tool is a really good tool for an application like this where the outline is not always the same from part to part. It's still able to see the Edge Pixels and detect that difference. I hope this video helped clarify how to set up and use the Edge Pixels tool, but if you have any additional questions, please give our tech team a call at 888 Option 2 for tech support. Thanks and have a great day.